Hello, everyone. This is the 76th episode of the Soccer Nostalgia Talk podcast. As always, this is Sean from Los Angeles, and I'm joined by Paul from Shiplin, England. For this episode, we interview Mr. Carlos Lozano as we discuss FC Barcelona during the Terry Venable years from 1984 to 1987. Mr. Lozano is a Spanish economist and former Catalan city councillor. He is also a member of CFE, El Centro de Investigaciones de Historia y Estadística del Fútbol Español, the Spanish Center of Investigation of Football History. Welcome, Carlos. You're welcome. Thank you. Thank you for joining us. Take us back to the summer of 1984. Barcelona has not won the league title since 1974. Argentine manager Cesar Luis Menotti has departed along with Diego Armando Maradona. A little-known Englishman named Terry Venables has just been appointed as manager. Describe the developments of this summer. Well, the context in that Barcelona of 1984 is really complicated, even dangerous for the new uh, coach. It's not only that Barcelona has won uh, the league from 11 years before. It's even worse. In 24 years, Barcelona had won one league. That's terrible because Real Madrid had won a lot of them. And obviously, the Barcelona president, Josep Luis Núñez, who was in charge from 1978, needed to make a big team in order to get the championship. And he was really trying. He was trying from the very first moment. But he had taken very good players like Schuster, Simonsen, Krankel, even Maradona. But in six years, there has got any none of the uh, of the success. There was a very bad luck also in Barcelona, and people thought so. We must uh, remember that in 1981, with Barcelona in the second position in the league, the top scorer of the team, Kini, is kidnapped, and for three weeks he cannot play because he's kidnapped, and the other clubs continue playing the league. Obviously, Barcelona didn't win it. In 1982, Schuster has a very important injury and cannot complete the season. And Barcelona, who is in lead by five, by five points with six matches to end, loses that league also. That was also terrible for Barcelona fans. Arthur, the Cup Winners' Cup is won by Barcelona. And so, in '82, Maradona arrives to Barcelona. But in his first season, he is injured by the same player, Coicochea, that had injured Schuster the year before. And in the second year, he is ill. So, two more seasons without success. In this context, Menotti leaves Barcelona. In the very last day of the season, 84, of the Maradona leaves Barcelona. And the option is a radical change. The Argentinian way didn't work. The previous German way with Udo Latek didn't work. The previous traditional way with Eleni Herrera, Eleni Herrera, which I still hear, didn't work. So who is winning the European competitions this year? The English teams. Let's go to a change. Let's go to play as an English team. Who will lead this? Well, a coach who was not known here, who was not in one of the best teams of England, but who was young and it was said he was very talented. So Terry Venables arrives here with nobody knowing him, with the expectancy of a change in the game, with the expectancy of taking new players, with many doubts about it, with the feeling that it not will be easy. Uh, like we will see, he will reach a great success in the first year. If you, a team strong, a team very good, a team very popular, but year after year will go losing that after losing every credit. It is an interesting story to tell today. Paul, I believe Bobby Robson in an interview stated that they had approached him, but at the time he, w- he was not going to leave the England post. And he actually recommended Venables to Barcelona. Do you know any more about this? Yeah, I think that's the case that, that Bobby Robson might have been the, the first choice there. And he had a couple of years previously when he was still at Ipswich been strongly linked with Athletic Bilbao I think they'd actually made an offer to Ipswich for him and he was close to leaving then and of course later on Bobby Robson did end up at Barcelona but at that time he was 
only in his first year or two as England manager. He had ambitions there. I think it was just the wrong time for him. But Venables, as Carla said, he was a, he was a young manager at the time. He was quite a well-regarded coach. He'd been involved in the England setup. Bobby Robson had used him. He employed some of the younger coaches to to help out with different aspects of the the different teams. And yeah, he basically recommended Venables, who wasn't a, a huge name certainly outside England at that time. Moving on to Venables in charge at Barcelona. His main transfer was the signing of Scottish striker Steve Archibald for Tottenham. And it was reported that the club had effectively signed the Mexican striker Hugo Sanchez from Atletico Madrid, but Venables insisted on Archibald. Before we analyse the long-term consequences of this transfer, what was the outlook on this move, Carlos? Well, that was a, a capital point of this. When he arrives here, the first matter is Maradona has left. Also, the striker of Barcelona, who was skinny, uh, had left in, for his age. And so the first point is, who will really substitute? Remember that there were only two places for foreign players. Schuster is one of them. Short is no a lesser matter who is the second one. Obviously, Barcelona, everybody preferred Hugo Sanchez. Hugo, the Mexican was regarded as a very, go, a very good a scorer in Atletico Madrid in, in Mexico and known because of his uh, character, his bad ways. Mm-hmm. But that was not seen as a bad thing at that time where the Spanish league was really hard, was really dangerous with a lot of injuries and a lot of defenders absolutely absolutely contundent. Mm-hmm. There is a Spanish sentence of that time that said, applied to defenders, that says, o pasa la pelota o pasa el jugador. Either the ball goes forward or the player goes forward, but never both. So the defenders knew that uh, if you have a player with a ball, maybe the ball will go, but the player will not go forward. So contender was the thing. So a lot of foreign strikers had had problems. The same Maradona had a very bad time in Barcelona because of that. And Ben Abel says he was Archibald and Scottish. Well, unknown, absolutely unknown. People received it well because Hugo Sanchez has gone to Real Madrid. And so from that moment, Hugo Sanchez is seen as the bad person of this, of this theater. But uh, Archiva is unknown. Arrives here and he, he gets some agreement in, in a few times. Eh? Archiva, as we will remember when we talk about European Cup, will get some important goals that will allow him a very loved player in Barcelona with time. Was he well known at the time, Steve Archibald, when he was signed? No, no, he was not known. It's the time where English league wasn't seen in the in TV, uh, where the references were very low, and we knew Liverpool because we're more recently second in, in European Cup, no Champions of European Cup, and and a bit more. Escoland was not very known. No, absolutely not. It was in an incognita. Uh, but well, that happened at that time. Uh, every time a foreign player arrived to the league, it was unknown before, before some months happened. This first season, 1984-85, Barcelona were on fire. They started the season with a 3-0 win over Real Madrid and just ran away with the title. What were Venables' on and off the field contributions that had led to such a transformation in the team? Well, the first point is, how curious that the first match of Benevols, the first official match, is against Real Madrid in Bernabeu. The league starts with Real Madrid 0, Barcelona 3. That was incredible. Any doubt you can have, uh, disappear it. Barcelona had 1-0-3, something that happened uh, that, that, that hadn't happened in 10 years. And also with a very good match of Barcelona, with a different way of play, and with the same players of the years before, but playing differently. Benevols maintains the keeper, Ruti, maintains three or the four defenders, Julio Alberto, Miguel y Lexanco, continue and recovers Gerardo, who was in the, in the club, and maintains in the center of the midfield with Schuster and Victor, two players, talentos and, and strong also. But here arrives the, the news. The two other midfielders are Young, Rojo and Calderé. 
And forward, we have Carrasco, who was there, and Archibald. Mm? A combination very, very good that in the very first match wins 0 3. I want at this point to remember some of this name, um, Calderé. Maybe you don't remember him, but he's an example of how, how Barcelona did the, the things in that time. Calderé was in Barca from his childhood, in the youth and so, and in the reserve team, but he hadn't played in the first team of Barcelona until 25 years. You have a pearl in your, in your junior teams, but he didn't play in first team until 25 years old. His first match in Barcelona is this, Real Madrid Jero Barcelona 3. So a point for, for Benevols to discover this player who was there from years before and nobody asked for him to play there. Calderé will be in some time not only permanent in the team of Barcelona, but also in the Spanish national team and will be one of the scorers in the World Cup uh, two years later. Mm-hmm. But so we have this point. That's where it was. Well, it was said that the World Cup was pressing. Maybe... It uh, it's understand to you, but it was said that Barcelona players made pressing. What was pressing? Something as simple as this: when the other team has the ball, go several players to press them to take the ball. That didn't happen before in Spain. Well, not so. It happened that the players went to the player with the ball to attack him, yeah? to take the ball, but by any means, usually by a fault and so on with a play who was slow, who was a some little violent. And, and so it was a Spanish football from 20 years before. And let's remember that, that a Spanish player played so, but then so in these 20 years, the influence of Italian Catenaccio at some point here, and the presence of foreign players, which usually were Argentinian, Uruguayan, Paraguayan, with this contundent way of play, had it that the Spanish way of play was contundent. Now it was pressing, eh? not violent, but also intense. Intense is the is the word. So they get the ball, they play fast, the ball, they play quickly the ball, and they arrive to the opposite goal in, in slow time. Just with this change, Barcelona was the revelation team with the unstoppable team of this league. So before their eventual falling out, at least in this first season, Venables seemed to have a good relationship with the West German star Bernd Schuster. In fact, Schuster credited Venables' tactics for this first season's success. He said the entire team was involved in the play. Well, according to Schuster with Minotti, all the play had to go through Maradona. Mm-hmm. Yes, uh, Schuster is the star of this team. And uh, out of any discussion, uh, Schuster is beloved by everybody in the Barcelona who plays that plays very, very well. Uh, remember that in the first 27 matches of league, Barcelona just loses one. There are very good matches. I remember one was nonetheless that Valencia 2, Barcelona 5. Well, the daily, the sports daily, qualified every player from 0 to 5. Schuster received a 6. It was impressive. It was unstoppable. It was uh, uh, with a present. So everybody was uh, in love with Schuster, obviously. Eh? Because Barcelona was winning. And in a season that was not so easy, eh? there are also some problems. Uh, first of them in September. You may not remember, but that Barcelona is to pay ball, is playing Cup Winners Cup, and goes to France to play against oh, Mets. Mets. Yeah. And Barcelona Mets, and wins 2 4. Normal, it's Mets. In the second leg in Barcelona, Barcelona scores 1 0, and later arrive four consecutive goals of Mets. One for in Camp Nou, and Barcelona is out of the European Cups in the very first round. Well, maybe that was good because Barcelona playing just the league and the cup could win easily. But it was a, a shock in that, in that moment. Eh? Even so, the march in the league was very good. In December, Barcelona defeats Real Madrid 3-2 and this dance is really, uh, really important. But just tw- uh, one week later, there is an incident with Carrasco going in his car to come now before a, of an away match. has a car accident. And Carrasco, one of the forwards, is one month out of the team. Nervous arrived because Barcelona supporters were very, very nervous. I remember in one league in 24 years. If you want, we can remember the very day in which Barcelona won the league. It was with a five point advantage or six points advantage, the nervous that people was until the very last minute. It, it seen from 
and why it cannot be understood. Uh, Barcelona had six points of advantage and nobody was sure Barcelona would be champion. Everybody was afraid that league could also be lost. As a, as a matter of fact, the, the point is in with six points of advantage, you go to Valladolid, you're winning one, two, and if you win, you are champion with four matches to end, and there is a penalty against Barcelona. All, everybody's thinking, we will get this. Uh, we never will get these two points. But that penalty is shoot for a very good player, Magico Gonzalez. Uh, maybe you remember, the best Central American player of the history. So Magico Gonzalez, he shoots and Urruti stops it. Uh, and Barcelona is champion and a very big party because Barcelona was finally champion in 1985, 11 years after the previous championship. Going into the second season, 1985-86, Venables kept faith with the backbone of the same squad and made no significant purchases. Why did he not strengthen the squad at a time when he would have had a strong hand? That's a good question. Uh, nobody arrived to Barcelona that year. Nobody. Uh, uh, not even one position could be better. Well, that was the point of view of that moment. Everybody was agree. Everybody agreed because they were champions, and so the expectations were high. But that was probably a mistake. Absolutely, the same players and eh? some changes in the usual team because the season will be complicated and very points. But the first ones are the injuries, principally of Rojo and Archibald. Eh? So in this second season, Rojo, a young, talented player, and Archibald, the striker, will be injured most of the season. Eh? Because of the last one, will arrive to the season another striker, the Paraguay with the Spanish passport, Raul Amarilla. Well, a good player, but not a top player at world level, who will not be enough to play for Archibald. There were also rumors that a group of senior players within the squad vetoed transfers. Is this true? Well, I, I don't remember so, not in my memory, but I remember that it was not a, a quiet season. When you lose matches in Barcelona, that uh, there are nervous, uh, everybody's nervous. So Real Madrid started a very strong league, very strong. Uh, that season, uh, Real Madrid will reach the record of points. And Barcelona, with not bad data, uh, is always far away. So problems arise at any moment. The matter is how Real Madrid could get a so good team. From the previous year, Real Madrid was a disaster that finished fifth, but they went to the young players, to the Quinta del Buitre, with Butragueño, with Mitchell, with Pardeza, with Martin Vázquez and Sanchez. These five players arrived in, in some amount of difference to the first team and really changed the team until the point they are league champions and UEFA Cup champions in an impressive season. And as he said, when Barcelona goes well, Real Madrid goes badly. And when Real Madrid goes well, Barcelona goes badly. That was the, the problem in the second season. As you mentioned, in this season, Barcelona lagged behind and Madrid ran away with the title. So the, t- the team that did so well the previous year struggled. And some people said that this might have been connected to the pressing game that you mentioned, that this drained the players physically. Do you think this could be the case as well? It has been said that the physical effort in the players was unusual too. And we have seen in other times, even Mourinho more recently would say the same, that when you ask for a physical effort to the players, the first year it gives good results, but in second year it goes slow. In Spain is, there is a known chase that is Atletico Madrid in the 70s. Uh, they took um, an Austrian coach, uh, Max Merkel, who was very, very exigent very, uh, in the physical. Well, they won the league in 1973. Literally won the league with this coach. But when the president asked the players, now that you are champions, what do you want? They say, fire the coach. <laughs> we cannot more with this effort. Please fire. And, and this coach was fired after winning the league because he was too exigent with players. Maybe there was something so also. Huh? And also the point... That when league goes to Barley and you are in the European Cup, which at that time is just four rounds before the final, the focus goes to the European Cup. Paul, let me ask you. It was said that during this particular season, 85-86, Venables 
had agreed to manage Arsenal for the following season, 86-87. But he declined after he saw how the club treated their manager, Don Howe. Do you remember these reports? It was reported in England. I think Venables had actually come to London as well for talks. But also the story was that how that Arsenal had actually approached Venables before and that was the reason that Don Howe was was unhappy at Arsenal. And it's interesting because Venables, his whole career before this had been in London, he played for London clubs, Chelsea, Spurs, QPR. He'd managed Crystal Palace and then QPR. And of course, later on, he'd, he'd returned to Tottenham. So his, his whole career was was London-based. So I think if he was going to return to England, it was always going to be for one of those clubs. But I think maybe the two things would be that, A, he was probably paid a lot more at Barcelona than than English clubs could afford at the time. And this was, of course, in the middle of the the Heysel ban, so English clubs weren't in Europe, so he would have been leaving the European games that we'll, we'll discuss a little more shortly as well. So I'm not sure. And Arsenal weren't, they weren't, one of the strongest teams at that time. They weren't they weren't challenging for the league. So I think from all those factors it was maybe unlikely unless he'd actually been sacked at the time that he would leave Barcelona for, for that job. But maybe there was a possibility. The Barcelona gave up on the league and saved its energy for the Champions Cup. In the semifinals, it played one of its most memorable remontadas in eliminating Swedish uh, squad IFK Gothenburg in a penalty kick shootout. And we all remember the famous photograph of a young Guardiola celebrating as a ball boy. Apart from the league title in 85, was this Venables' zenith as a Barcelona manager? Well, yes, and the global of the rounds of that European Cup is the zenith of Benevols because they were well or agonic. That, that season for Barcelona in Europe was very important. Barcelona never had been European champions and will not be this season too. Hadn't played the European final in 25 years. And so it was the biggest hope was this. But every round was a problem. So in November against Porto, um, imagine what is an European Round between the Spanish champion and Portuguese champion, and they know very well Barcelona wins here 2 0. But in Porto, uh, the Portuguese team is absolutely superior, absolutely, and they can score three goals. But Archibald scores an, an incredible goal, it scores a very needed goal that Barcelona qualifies, even losing 3 1. But in quarter final, the rival is even than, more dangerous, it's Juventus. The European champion is the rival in quarter finals. In Camp Nou, with Camp Nou absolutely full, absolutely 120,000 people, see, like Barcelona, wins 1 0 with a goal scoring by Julio Alberto, a defender scoring a goal from, uh, from 40 meters. So Barcelona goes to Turin, and there also Platini plays a very good match, Juventus scores, and Archibald with the head, with the lateral of the head, it says with the with the error, it's correct, the goal, the decision goal that qualifies Barcelona. So Archibald, again, in not a very brilliant season, has scored uh, the needed goal to qualify Barcelona. So if final arrives, Barcelona goes to go to work. It's very easiest. They are not even professionals. Uh, in the press, they tell us they work in a hotel, they work in a in, in every office, but they are professionals, so it's expected Barcelona to defeat go to work easily. Well, in Sweden, Barcelona knows it's so we arrive to the second leg, and Barcelona wants the wants the the miracle, and reach it. The first the, the first point to matter is Archibald cannot play. The striker will be Pichi Alonso, a substitute who hasn't scored a lot of goals and who will leave the team at the end of the season. Well, Pichi Alonso scores three goals, incredible three nil, all three goals by Pichi Alonso, and the match go to the penalties. In the penalties, Barcelona. Misses the first chance, but to Ruti stops two of them two later, and Barcelona qualifies. It was really incredible how Barcelona had reached finally the second European final of his history, and everybody thought, who will play the final against us? Against us, Estela or Anderlecht? 
And it's Esteagua. Esteagua of Bucharest. Nobody knows them. And who is playing the final? In Seville. Everybody's sure Barcelona will be European champion. Well, not... You can never be sure before of the match. Yeah, as, as you say, it seemed like this... Um the final was going to be a formality for Barcelona. Um, we all know what happened. What was the reaction of the fans towards Venables after that? Well, the first point was if Venables, uh, at this point, the match is in the final is 0-0. Barcelona not only doesn't score, it had, Barcelona has the ball, but doesn't reach his good chances of scoring. Really, It has in 120 minutes. And in a, and later in penalties, the most incredible, Uruti uh, against uh, stops to penalties, but Barcelona misses all four penalties. Four different players shot, and Romanian goalkeeper Duke Adam uh, stops personally all four penalties. And that was impressive. It was uh, deprimed, absolutely. Schuster made the match average, not good, not bad, but Benevos thought at 80 minutes that he had to change Schuster, and Remove him from the from the match. That decision is polemic. Is can be right, can be not. We never know. But the point is, Schuster takes it very badly. Schuster goes not to the bench, but to the dress room. He dresses and he leaves the stadium without the match finished. He takes a cab, a taxi, and goes to the hotel. Terrible. And when it is now, well, everybody is. We need the press, the fans. A guilty of the defeat. Well, who is the best guilty? The player who has gone without the others. No? So Benevols were not very criticized, not, not especially, eh? not at that moment. And so the and the season continued, and well, he will still win the the League Cup one month later. It was Schuster, the center of all polemics in that moment. Like we will see it with very consequences for the next season. The consequences. That was a, a point of, of turnover. In that summer 86, everybody agrees. Who is the guilty? Schuster. Everybody wants Nunez to be very hard with him. And with the decision of President Nunez, Schuster will not play a game with Barcelona. If he doesn't go to another club, he will not play next season. As there are only two places for foreign players, we will go to look for another player, for new foreign players to improve the team. And here there is the big chance, and I feel I, I I believe it was very very well done. The chance to take here Gary Lineker. In a moment, the Hawks are in Gary Lineker. In May 86, Barcelona sings Gary Lineker, the top striker of the English League. That's the moment of the World Cup of Mexico. And we are here in Barcelona watching TV with great interest in matches of England and celebrating every goal of Lineker, who will be the top scorer of the World Cup. So, well, we have now the top scorer of the World Cup. That's a good, a very good decision. Not only that, there is another foreign player new, Mark Hughes, the Welsh player. Archibald was good, but he had injured often. So let's take another player, and it will be also British, Mark Hughes, a very different style. He is strong, he is as a rope, he is very big, and he's really a different style of the usual here. Well, so we start the next season, 86-87, with the hope of a new start with the same coach because Venables maintains the credit, maintains the people maintain the faith in Venables and along with him today, well, you are the British coach, you are the British style, take British players and let's see if we really show our British team <laughs> and get the, ex the success that British teams had got uh, in the late years. Yeah, it seemed that Venables made a statement of intent with with these new signings, and he also signed the national team goalkeeper Zubi Zaretta and midfielder Roberto. So, as you've said, this meant that Archibald was demoted, and Schuster at this point was out of the picture. So, how were these transfers and and these changes viewed at the time? Well, it was a little bit strange the, the Archibald's point. Because as you see, of the two foreign players, Schuster goes to home. He is not inscribed. He's not. He cannot play. He will be all the season without playing a single minute. And Archibald, who is a good guy, accepts something unusual to be uh, inscribed in the second team. The second team plays second division. Eh? It, remember, it, this is not English way. 
here the second team of Barcelona plays second division against some teams of importance. Uh, that year, Valencia was in second division. Huh? But well, that was strange. He will have the, the chance to, to, to return. Well, it was accepted so, because Hughes, it was said, he was a very good player. Hughes was a bit known by, by us, because in the qualifying to the World Cup, Wales meet Spain. And Wales won 3-0 with Hughes and Rush destroying absolutely the Spanish defenders. So it was expected he may be a good forward. Well, and he will not be lucky in Spain. Uh, he will score just four goals in 10 months in league. Uh, that is very, very poor for the Barcelona's forward. Gary Lineker was relatively successful and his highest point was the hat-trick against Real Madrid in early 1987 in a 3-2 win. As far as the fans, did this justify Venables' decision to sign him? Oh, well, as I remember it, we love it, Lineker. It's, it's, uh, we like it him from the very first day. He was the new in a team that we need to be solid and, and he was the new star of the team. <laughs> he was the new star. He was the new star of the team. From the very first day, Barcelona uh, that season is not playing well, but he's reaching good results. So before of this three or two against Real Madrid with three goals by Lineker, that was that was fantastic. Barcelona had started in at home matches with uh, making a record. In the first eight home matches, Barcelona receives zero goals. So he's, he gets all points but one. That takes you up at the table. And when Barcelona played the way, it was not so good. But it was enough to be in the first position in the table, even top of Real Madrid. And when this happened, everybody is happy here. Huh? And in Europe, Barcelona was passing rounds and it seemed to be a good season. And Lineker was the star of the team, undoubtedly. Not Hughes, not to be Zarreta, who was the new goalkeeper uh, and received a few goals, but didn't reach the love of the supporters still. It was Lineker, absolutely the star in that moment. Yeah, and meanwhile, Hughes was really struggling, as you said. And before the end of the season, he was actually out of the team. And Venables reintegrated Archibald in his place. And was this a sign that he'd made a mistake in signing Mark Hughes? Well, the point is, uh, as I said, only four goals in in February is in, from August to February are very few, uh, and the sensations and the feelings were not good. Even so, well, the team was at the top of the table, and that was not a very big problem. The problem arrives on February 28th. Barcelona is at the top of the league. We have played uh, two-thirds of the of the league, and there is an average match Barcelona receives Sporting de Gijón. Everybody expects a win and continue in the top. But Barcelona uh, is defeated by 0-4. 0-4 against the mid-table team. Next week, Barcelona goes to Zaragoza and loses the, the, the that's more usual. And nervous arrive. Again, once more, everybody was thinking we will lose this league. We need to do something. And what was the solution? Uh, Nunez takes, take Hughes out of the team and Archibald come to the second team, to the first team. So for the last 14 matches, Archibald is again the striker of Barcelona and Hughes will not have a new chance and will go to Manchester United again some months later. And didn't get a, really a, a feeling with the fans. Is that was a player that everybody expected more. It never arrived. He had chances for months and months, maybe more time, we'll never know. He had nine months and didn't, and didn't reach the objectives. A, a pity. You mentioned that Barcelona were league leaders until they lost steam in the second half, the second half of the season to Real Madrid. It was a strange league format that season, where at the conclusion of the regular season, you would have the top six teams, the middle six teams, and the bottom six teams were separated to another group format, playing matches against each other. At this phase. Real Madrid seemed fresher to last the marathon and won its second consecutive league title. Did a second consecutive runner-up position at this point weaken Venables' position in addition to losing in the UEFA Cup to unfancied Scottish side Dundee United? 
Yes, the, the end of the season was, was terrible. At the February, everybody was relatively okay. But in March, everybody everything goes badly. This strange league was an invent of Nunez because he thought that the best income from the clubs was the come from the public in the stadium. So a new system that that was was not unfair because there was the points of all the season that you accumulated, but allowed you to receive twice. Real Madrid in Camp Nou and Barcelona went twice to Bernabeu was very better. So we finished the first round in in the first days of April, very very soon, with Real Madrid one point ahead of Barcelona. In the playoff, the playoff is a mini league of six teams. The first match is Real Madrid Barcelona. They draw and they continue with one point of difference with nine matches to end. But is these nine final matches? Real Madrid is very strong, wins home and away. And Barcelona, no. Barcelona wins at home, but has serious defeats away. I believe that three of the five away matches is, uh, uh, are lost by Barcelona. And so differences will grow. And uh, obviously, the the opinion is Barcelona has lost his energy, has lost his possibilities, because he hasn't the, the force, the strong, do, to go away and play in Zaragoza and play in, in Sarriá against Espanyol, as he's doing Real Madrid, who is winning. And they're scoring a lot of goals because that are some of the best moments of the Butragueño and Mitchell and Padez and these players. So Benevols is, uh, is questioning, yes, yes. Uh, the season concludes without any title. Not in the Cup and not in the UEFA Cup, where that United wins in Camp Nou absolutely unexpectedly because nobody remembered that United. The trivia is that that United had eliminated Barcelona in the 60s in the Files Cup. And this little Scottish team has a record. It's the only European team who has played against Barcelona four times in European Cups and has won all four. Than the United. <laughs> uh, so we, we expect not meet him, not meet them again, never. <laughs> but what is it? The answer of the season was very disappointingly, and some people thought uh, that was the end of an era. But Nunez didn't think so and maintained uh, Benevols for one more season and had the, time, the topic of Schuster in his hands because Schuster had one more year of contract. He said he w- he wanted to stay here and you had to do something. You are paying him a lot of money. He's a very good player. Everybody is against him because he has an evident lack of professionality. And summer of 87, the big matter is this. What do you do with Schuster? Yeah, as you say, so... Venable started this final season, uh, 1987-88, without making any significant purchases. And the main change being that Schuster was reintegrated at the expense of Mark Hughes. Did this indicate that Venables was indecisive and maybe lacked ambition in not making new signings? Well, at that point, Venables was not the the top in the decisions in Barcelona. It was Nunez again. Eh? His personalist style, uh, when he coach begins to lose, he's not sucked at the very moment, but he begins to lose power. And the final decision of Schuster is he talks uh, of Nunez, he, he talks with Schuster and become friends again. The decision is Schuster will come back. And so even Hughes and Archibald both leave Barcelona. There is only a place for two foreign players, there will be Lineker and Schuster. Hmm? And, uh, and it's well accepted by people. People want Barcelona to win. And so, well, Lineker and Schuster with the local players can be a good combination. They tried to get some other players, some other Spanish players. It was even very hard to, to get uh, new players at that time. There was not a lot of quality. I, I must tell you so. The year before, they got the goalkeeper to Bizarreta. There was, if, and if you look at the national team of Spain at that moment, they all were at Barcelona or Real Madrid. You didn't see uh, very more. So the team is the same. And August 87 starts a new league with everybody imagines there will be a competition with three teams. The Real Madrid, who has a very strong team. Uh, now in perspective, uh, I, I will give an unpopular opinion, but for me, the Real Madrid what, of 58, 59 and 90 was better than Real Madrid of 2022, of the current Real Madrid, and deserved an European Championship more than Real Madrid of 89 
that current Real Madrid, uh, but that they didn't get it. That very strong Real Madrid and an Atletico Madrid, who had uh, from that year the new president Jesus Hill, who arrived taking the very best player he could. For instance, Paulo Futre arrived that year to the Spanish league. Everybody expected a three a three horses race between Barcelona and Madrid, Atletico Madrid, and so we start August 1987. In the end, Venables was sacked four matches into the season. That included three losses and was replaced mm-hmm. by Luis Aragones. It seemed inevitable, but no one expected such a poor start. And uh, Barcelona president Nunez stated that the players had begged him to sack Venables. I assume the fans endorsed this decision. Well, that's the point. Liga starts and Barcelona loses the second, the third, and the fourth matches. Two of them at Camp Nou. Something must be guilty of this. And we have played just four matches, but Benevols is sacked. About the players, well, that's possible they they were saying those things to Lunyev. It's possible. Eh? That in those times, players were talking with, with presidents and these same players will continue the decision under Luis Aragonés and since months later will be an absolute revolution when the players will go to an hotel, Esperia, will take the microphones to say that President Núñez is lying them, is betraying them and is not uh, answering for his uh, promises. It's, it's, it's that decision. And the point was about uh, money, about money. Eh? The, the way Barcelona players received the money was... Half of it was for them as a, as a person, and half of them was as rights for an, for an enterprise. Well, there were very problems with that, and players were sublimated. Well, which kind of players? Well, they were really problematic, these players. In fact. They were thinking in their money, thinking in a lot of things, maybe more than in playing football, and decision would be absolutely this, a disaster with Venables and with Luis Aragonés. The fans were, were, were losing the faith in Venables. We still had a bit of faith. It was September. And when you are bad in September, you can still go better and, and even finish well. But it's, it's true that after three years and the last of them without any success, uh, the credit of Venables was low. Even so, I believe that he could have been one or two months more. And if things went better, who knows? Things were very bad. With, with Luis Aragonés, things were absolutely a disaster and was one of the worst seasons in Barcelona history. Barcelona finished at sixth and it, it was 30 years ago and Barcelona has never been so low again. Let's take a closer look at the legacy of Venables. He himself believed the title that he won with Barcelona was his greatest oh, achievement, his greatest. but it seems he didn't really build on it. Yes, at the very first moment, we remember him as a big coach. The, the success of the, his first season was spectacular. It was spectacular and have the agreement of, of all the public and the press. But the same 1988, Cruyff arrives to Barcelona and changes and changes for well. So we leave the this way and we start the Cruyff way. Very personal, very conflictive in some times, but very successful. So the legacy of Benevols in Barcelona has been a bit uh, forbidden. I believe that the people don't remember him, don't have them, don't have them as one of the important persons in Barcelona, even when he got a league that nobody got before in many years. But the very big present in the history of Cruyff, just in this next period, goes against Benevol. I will say there is some legacy in the Spanish league. Mm-hmm. And to have an English coach in the Spanish league was very strange. Mm-hmm. There had been in the 20s and 30s of the last century, that's another matter, and very successful. But later it was very strange. Just Barcelona had one big Buckingham, uh, imagine you remember, was the coach of Barcelona and Seville in the first 70s, with some success. Uh, but that was the exception. When Benny was raised here, he's the only English coach in the Spanish league. But three years later, there are more. Athletic takes over Kendall. Atletico Madrid will take Atkinson and later Colin Addison. And Seville uh, will take Jock Wallace. I believe that was the name. I don't remember one. So 
the English style was uh, well appreciated in Spain at that moment. And for some years, we'll have English coach. And from that time to now, occasionally we have had. And Bobby Robson, you said before, has been here. Now, maybe who who later take it proud of, of this English way will be J John Benjamin Toshak. Yeah? He arrives to La Sociedad in 1996. He brings them with young players to win a cup. And later we go to Real Madrid in 1989 when he will win a league with a spectacular figures, mm-hmm. even when he will be just one season. So maybe the Spanish, if you ask them, a British coach in Spain, is Toshak who takes the credit as the more important. But Benevos was the first of this era, the first to take here the pressing, the 4-4-2, the English way to play. But I am afraid that many people don't remember so. Some believe that a loss versus Storia Bucharest was really the reference point for his eventual sacking. Do you believe that's true? Well, nobody could forget that. I said it was one year and a half from that day, and everybody remembered that. And the depressing feelings in Barcelona came from that uh, very moment. Well, this is football. You can win three times, but the day you lose in some way, it's terrible. And you have seen in Barcelona more recently. The deceptions in Europe in every time in the, have finished with Valverde, with Messi, with everybody. Because you can win a league losing just one match, like Valverde, Valverde reached in, in 19. But if you are out in Europe in one bad day, that is the main point of the season that everybody remembers. And Benemos never could... Uh, remove that feelings that the defeat in Seville was unacceptable. And others such as Marcus Alonso and even Maradona, I believe, felt that Venables was lucky to inherit a gifted side prepared by Minotti. What are your thoughts on that? Uh, we never know. He maintains eight of the players of Menotti in, in, of his 11, as, as I told you. And it's true that the last matches of Menotti were is playing very well. And in 84, the last matches, Barcelona arrives uh, far away from the top positions and finally loses the league by one point. Uh, we'll never know. Uh, Rally Menotti is a good coach. He's a good philosopher also. Uh, he talks very well. He can convince you of everything. But Benevol's take a different style. It was really different style. Very, really different. Uh, Menotti played 4-3-3 with Maradona as the main prize. And Venables played 4-4-2 with Schuster. It's not the same, so we'll never know. Both deserve credit, but well, the, the the league title arrives with Venables. Menotti played the uh, manager at two leagues and never won. Getting back to the Archibald signing, as good as and productive as he was in the title winning season, when compared to the output of Hugo Sanchez with Real Madrid, there's a feeling that Venables perhaps turned down the better deal in the long run. Is this the belief amongst most Barcelona observers? Uh, that's a question that is, is, um, everybody knows the answer, so nobody asks that. <laughs> Hugo Sanchez in the, f- in the five years in Real Madrid is top scorer, four of them usually arriving to 30 goals every season. That was obviously the best striker in Spain, I can say you, from 1960 to 2000. In those 40 years, the best striker in the Spanish league was Hugo Sanchez. I say also, a very hated player by the opposite. Eh? And he, uh, in the field, with some attitudes, unacceptable eh? against players and against supporters of the opposite time, team. But, well, the, the figures are which are. Archival, well, he could give you 13 goals in a league, but Hugo Sanchez gave you 30. Uh, there is no comparison possible. Even so, Archival is, is very loved in Barcelona supporter, by Barcelona supporters. He's living in Catalonia. He speaks Catalan. That's something that few foreign players uh, finish doing. He's seen in some in TV and sometimes and, and has his own business. And he's very loved even today. And well, remember, 40, 40 years later, yes, near, near 40 years later. But well, comparisons with Hugo Sanchez, not please. <laughs> we better not do, not, not, the, not do them. But in contrast to 
what you've just said about Archibald, there were criticisms from journalists that right up to the end, Venables always conducted his interviews in English and he claimed he used an interpreter because he didn't want to be misquoted or misunderstood. Was, was this really a complaint at the time or an issue? Well, you can know Spain is a country when everybody just speaks Spanish or, and, and the original languages. And we always expect that the foreign players and coach learn the language here. There is some time. And one year, for instance, no problem. And Benny was arrived here and somebody should translate always. But he was three years and a half. And it was a bit strange that he never uh, used the Spanish to tell things. Maybe he didn't know. I say also, well, no, we didn't do nothing in for that. For example, well, you said Venables. I'm sorry, but everybody here said Venables because it is written Venables. <laughs> and you could hear radio, no, not only normal people, but radio, uh, people say Terry Venables. So there is also a point here of, uh, of no need of communication, maybe. I say you, some years later, maybe you remember in England, there was a TV series, a co-production between uh, ITV and Television of Catalonia. It was the life of a, co of a foreign coach in Barcelona. Nobody said he was Venables. Nobody said that. Eh? It was a mix of Venables and Latic. That series were really depressing. Uh, they show a coach, a fictional coach, living in a hotel without friends, who at the night go to the bed of the, co of the hotel to take some, some alcohol. And so a very lonely and depressive life. Eh? So you maintain this life for three years. You can, <laughs> and also with the press that sometimes gives allergies, but some of the times he's attacking you, well, it, it must be hard in the personal, even so. So the feeling is he didn't he didn't implement him here. He well, he finished his, his years and went away. A difference to Lineker. Lineker learned the Spanish, even who, when he was not very usual to hear them, but he learned the Spanish. And now in England, he is always talking very well about Barcelona, with very low, with very... So Lineker is still recognized for that. Benevolence was lonely, so it's a different church, and well, didn't work that personal matter with supporters. He didn't work it. Ultimately, would it be fair to say that his tenure coincided with the emergence of the La Quinta del Buitre and Real Madrid, and that was basically his main obstacle for success? Yes, yes. He, as I said, that was a very good uh, lineup of Real Madrid in those years. They will win five consecutive leagues. They'll win UEFA Cup, and they don't get the European Cup because every year had some bad day, and because the Milan of Rijkaard and Gullit uh, is in their way. That's true. Also, that Benevolence made a very good team in the first season, but he doesn't know to reform it later. Hmm? Nunez doesn't give him the players. Only Lineker, only Lineker, that is not badly. But he also has the lack of imagination to say, well, now the other Spanish teams have seen how we play. They know our pressing. Let's improve. Let's do something now. New. No, Barcelona is, is in the same line for three years. The other teams go advancing. Atletico Madrid, Real Madrid, and so Barcelona finally goes lowest ever received. That maybe is going... And that maybe is with the Venables. So, in closing, discussing Venables' legacy at Barcelona, obviously winning that title after a barren decade must have been significant. But is he remembered by younger fans or only historians of the club? Uh, for those of one who lived those years, I was 14 years old. For us, it's, we remember it perfectly. It's, it was a, the first season was a brilliant season, just two defeats. Two important wins over Real Madrid. That's we all remember it perfectly. Everything youngest. Well, the grief era starts in '88, and they believe Barcelona starts then. And when we talk about the best players of history of Barcelona, they just say players of the 21st century, uh, not even those players of the '90. As more you may remember the Stoikovs, Laudrup. If you ask them players of the '80s, no, they don't remember. They don't have interest. They begin. They believe history begins. In 1990, well, those people is so <laughs> everywhere. In two words, Benevols is, is, is accepted as a very good coach in the history of Barcelona. 
with some good years, and it's uh, berated for that. But his uh, his year finished, and he his history, just history, not the best of the history, not the worst of history, and he has his contribution and is remembered. But if you ask somebody the first, the best four season for coach in the history of Barcelona. They not give the name of animals. Hmm? If you ask them, ten best, yes, and ten best, they will give it. With that, we thank you for an interesting discussion. Once again, we would like to thank Mr. Lozano for his participation in his interview. For any questions and comments, you may contact us on Facebook and on my blog is Soccer Nostalgia. On Twitter, I'm at sp1873. Mr. Paul Will can be contacted on his blog, The 1888 Letter, and on Twitter, he's at 1888 Letter. You may also follow the podcast on Spotify and now on Google, Apple, and Stitcher, all under Soccer Nostalgia Talk podcast. Please leave a review, rate, and subscribe if you like the podcast. Mr. Lozano's Twitter info is also listed on the blog and podcast listings. So, Mr. Lozano, thank you very much. Hope to have further discussions on the history of football with you. I expect it. Thank you. Thank you very See you. much. See you. Bye.